everybody, this is Luc. I am still in Phoenix right now. Sitting next to me is Dr. Deborah Franz of the WL Gore Company. She's responsible for leadership development. And thank you for doing this interview with me. My pleasure. I think leadership development is already an oxymoron in your company. Yes, it is. You're exactly right. I'd like to take that as a starting point. All right. Um, you're not a leader in our enterprise unless you have followership. Mm -hmm. And so what this means is that our teams come together around uh, opportunities and then the person who emerges as a leader is the one who has something to offer that people would appreciate. It might be the ability to bring them together and organize it or things as a project. It might be a certain type of expertise um, most, or, or even influence or the ability to get resources. So these are all the leadership skills that everyone still needs to develop. But it's the, the practice of these that actually stimulates or inspires the followership. And that's what when you become a leader. Now, it sounds very logical, but it's, I think it's really difficult to implement in companies of nowadays that leadership is actually defined by followership, by influence. Mm -hmm. We tend to see it very unilaterally and look at it only through the glasses of authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to come to the second subject. Readers of my blog, they know that I blog a lot about a thing called social architecture. And today in your lecture I saw something like social architecture come alive in something that you already apply in your company. You call it the lattice? Yes, the lattice. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Yes, this was actually an idea from our founder all 50 years ago. And uh, Bill Gore saw that in every company, no matter how hierarchical, there seemed to be an informal network that also appeared in the background. And that informal network was based on personal relationships. So even though this might be my official department, um, to get something done, I might seek out someone else informally. And so when he created the enterprise, he wanted to try to make that the actual architecture of the firm, the organizational structure. And the, the features that that involves are that um, there are no rules about who can talk to someone else. We want none of that. So in order to do that, there are no titles. No titles? No titles, no titles. And we're associate. Um, and so no titles, no job descriptions, because it's more adaptive and fluid than that. And then the lattice allows me to seek out anybody I need to. And then one of the things as a learning professional, which is what I do there, leadership development and learning, is that I am continuously trying to help people grow their lattice, um, helping them if they need help to build lots of relationships all based on trust. So people, you learn people to grow their own social fabric within the company? Yes, yes. That's also why you apply a different definition to sponsorship? Yes. Totally different to what we know. What is a sponsor in your company? Um, a sponsor is something that everybody has. So mm -hmm. every single associate, including the CEO, has a sponsor. And this is an individual who has formally committed to, to you, to help you grow, to help you make the right career choices, um, to seek out opportunities that will help you grow and help you learn. Uh, what we don't have is managers and bosses. They just do not exist there. We have leaders, but no managers and bosses. However, each person has a sponsor. Mm -hmm. So when you start at the company, you don't know what sponsoring is. So you are given a starting sponsor who will help you learn what it is, learn how to choose a good one, um, and then as you grow your lattice, you meet people and you say, yeah, I think that feedback you gave me after that meeting, that works for me, I've heard you, but would you be willing to guide me in other ways of improving what I'm doing here? Would you be willing to be my sponsor? So that's really, you take something, you take that very seriously, the sponsorship? Absolutely. One final question. I love the term that you used for a role within your company, it's called the product mother. Yes. What is a product mother? As a product mother, it, the role is a product specialist. In some companies, it's like a product manager, but it's way more than that. Um, we divide all of our work in three areas in you know, order to be an innovation company. Our technology leg, which is related to the R&D. Mm -hmm. We have manufacturing and operations where something is built, and we have sales where it's sold. And so we actually call this the three-leg stool. You know, yeah, to sit on. Yeah, yeah. So we have, again, the technology, the manufacturing, and the sales. The, the circle around those legs, so they don't go like this, mm -hmm. is the product specialist. Yeah. And they have to integrate the technology. They have to integrate the manufacturing and operations. They have to integrate the sales and marketing in order to make that product go out and, and be 
be successful. And the, uh, it was actor, actually Dr. Bob Gore, who was the son of the founder, who created the term product mother, even though many of these individuals are men. But it suggests the level of nurturing and absolute vigilant attention that a new product needs to be successful. So instead of, of making an exhaustive list of characteristics for that product specialist, you'd rather refer to the concept of a mother, nurturing, bringing it all together, and taking care of everything that a real mother has to take care of. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Deborah Franz. This was Dr. Deborah Franz and Luke from Phoenix. Bye.